Hey, everybody, and happy Veterans Day. I appreciate the four of you coming to spend an hour of your time with us today. Now, this isn't one of our regularly scheduled conversations. We do a lot of conversations on Tuesdays, some Wednesday afternoons. But this conversation was actually spot inspired by an email sent to me by Nancy with Arrive. She sent me an email saying, hey, Andrew, I've worked with a ton of great breweries that are run by veterans. Have you ever thought about having a conversation? And, you know, Veterans Day was approaching. seemed like a perfect opportunity. And all four of you are spread across the country and you have a couple things in common. You also run breweries, but you have past careers in the military. So I'm excited to learn about both today. But also, I'm based in Norfolk, Virginia, and I want to apologize. I don't believe any of you are in the Navy. Is that correct? So I don't have any Navy representatives. We have a large Navy base right in my backyard. So I apologize to the Navy. But at that point in time, Kevin, you're to the right of me. If you could unmute yourself, tell everybody a little bit about you know your past career, what you did in the military, and a little bit about your brewery that you run today. Sure. Um, Kevin Ryan, the service brewing company in Savannah, Georgia, um, graduated from West Point in 1996, uh, served in the infantry for eight years, uh, was in the first of the 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment in Anchorage, Alaska, uh, 3rd Brigade 4ID at Fort Carson, deployed to Iraq in 03, uh, returned in 04, uh, and then uh, was in healthcare management for eight years, and then now beer for seven. And we're going to dive into shortly why you chose to open a brewery. Now, Catherine, you're up. Hi, I am Catherine Cripps at Kokendorfer Corken, Brewing Company in Duncan, Oklahoma. Can and you say that three times really fast for us? I know. And that with our Imperial Hefeweizen Kokendorfer Brewing Company, 10 times right. Right. Um, I served in the military, retired in 2005. And I was a dentist, an army dentist. And so I spent uh, two long tours in Germany and loved it. Stationed at Fort Knox, uh, Fort Benning, Hoor, and um, a lot of time in San Antonio, which is the base of our uh, healthcare facilities. And St. Louis, Missouri of all places. So I've, I've gotten around. Awesome. Well, nice to meet you face to face today. And you are the third dentist in the craft beer industry I've interacted with over the past few months. So I think we might have to have a future conversation on what we can learn from dentists in craft beer. Yeah. <laughs> JD, welcome. You're with Firebase Brewing, but I'd love to learn a little bit more about you today. Uh, yes, sir. So JD McBride with Firebase Brewing Company uh, in Temple, Texas. We're about 20 minutes outside of Fort Hood. Uh, <clears throat> so I was in the men's department of the Navy. My first four years were in the Marine Corps. I did the four years there and then switched over to the Army. Uh, retired in 2019. Spent time in Okinawa, Japan and Yuma, Arizona with the Marine Corps. Uh, 3rd Brigade, 4th ID at Fort Carson. So Kevin, we were probably at the same place, the same location. Uh, spent four tours in Iraq with that unit and then Hawaii, then Washington State where I went to Eastern Africa and then retired from there and ended up here in Temple, Texas. So. so I have to say, all of you are already making me miss traveling all the great destinations you've mentioned in just the first couple of minutes. So, I mean, I guess that's a perk of your past lives. You have to travel and see so much of the world. Now, Chris, how about you? We've had a few phone calls before, but for everyone who hasn't had the opportunity to meet you, tell everybody a little bit about what you do. Yep. Uh, Chris Calhoun, the Tap House and Imperial Brewing Company in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, joined the Marine Corps in 1991, retired in 2011. Uh, did a couple of uh, additional tours with SOCOM after that and then decided to open up here in 2017. And have grown from just a craft beer bar to a, a homebrew store to a now full-blown brewery pub and tavern with a full kitchen and it's uh, quite an experience you are a busy person now before we talk into why you opened your breweries you know i'd love to kind of hear about your experiences traveling we touched on that a moment ago but how did all of your experiences around the globe contribute to you wanting to get more involved in craft beer and at this point in time i know you are so respectful but anyone just jump in <laughs> at any moment i want to learn well, I could I could tell um, a quick story. I mean, I um, my first experience with craft beer was in Colorado. Um, went out there to play a rugby match against the Air Force Academy. And um, if you've ever been around a rugby team, you know that parties are the best part about the game. So 
um, someone handed me a fat tire back in 1995 and, um, that was it, you know, like it opened my eyes to craft beer and, and the beer could taste better than my father ever, ever consumed. Um, and you know, that started my journey with enjoying craft beer. And Kevin, when you were enjoying that fat tire, were you ever thinking just yet, I need to open a brewery someday or are you just more so the consumer at that point in your life? But it was much easier being a consumer, for sure. Much easier. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, same thing. For mine, it's uh, Colorado was the first experience when I got stationed there. Um, <clears throat> just kind of moving from Colorado to Washington or to Hawaii to Washington and then had a little bit of time with some SOCOM units over in Germany. Just uh, that sense of community that the, the craft beer industry and breweries kind of bring, um, even if you're away from home. So being – you know, military and moving around often enough it's one of those you know having a place you can go to and feel comfortable and and you know safe you know you're not in a bar where people are you know getting drunk all night so just kind of that and the, the sense of community i think that's a lot of that's the biggest reason why we jumped into it was uh the big community factor that craft beer plays in their area so and when you were traveling abroad to places like germany did you ever have that one moment that just kind of sucked you in more so than others uh yeah it was uh going to i forget where it was it was one of the castles i had um it was a local little brewery i forget what it was called but it just you know that was the town's brewery and it just like okay this is we had kind of talked about it prior to the prior to retirement and it just kind of solidified that if we can just find a place that you know preferably doesn't have a brewery already and kind of bring that into the community um yeah it, that's what we wanted. So now, JD, did you we say made the it. word castle just now? Yes, yes. So was the brewery in a castle? I absolutely love castles. So. It wasn't, unfortunately. It was uh, Castle Lichtenstein, but they had some, you know, local town brew nearby. So or from nearby. So awesome! Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yes. And speaking about about Germany, that's how we got into it. We were living in Germany, loved it for four years, four and a half years. And on the flight home, my husband ordered a beer, of course, and he picked up that Bud, Budweiser and said, mm -mm, no, nope, not going to happen. So he started home brewing in 1990 and um, he supported me through a lot out. You know, he was my great army husband. And so he supported me in my career. So it's my turn to support him. He's our, our brewmaster. And when we got here in Oklahoma, the laws were not conducive to a good craft brewery. When they changed, though, we started thinking maybe this might be an opportunity. And so that's why we opened up. And we don't have another brewery in southwest Oklahoma. So that's why we're here. Thanks to Germany. I love it. It's great to have an opportunity where you can be that community hub where people come to for that sense of togetherness. So it sounds like both you and JD and I'm sure the others have created that in your unique areas. Now, Chris, last but not least, tell me about your craft beer experiences and what led you to your journey today. Uh, you know, it's an interesting story. And when I really think about it, my dad used to drink quite a bit of beer and drank some different beers. And I remember thinking about this now as I look up at some of this memorabilia I put up. World's Fair beer in Knoxville, uh, mid 80s. I remember going to that. He was kind of helping doing that. And they had this lineup of different beers. Um, you know, I was too young to drink then, but never thought a lot about it. But I think about that now. And I think the first place I went uh, to Malia, we were doing a, a tour over there. And I went to a, a bar in Rwanda and had a Tusker beer, it's the Budweiser of Africa, if you didn't know. Um, yep. and I, I mentioned that to a buddy of mine, and years later, his first beer that he brought in for Molo Tins District was Tusker. Uh, and then that grew up to a lot of German beers, Polliner, um, Hacker Shore, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and basically, it was from traveling, you know, just like everybody else here, traveling around, trying different things, not being closed mind and, and opening your mind to and your taste buds to a lot of variety from around the world. Um, Japan, uh, in Tokyo, I, I drank several unique, interesting uh, rice lagers. Um, in Moscow, uh, while I was there, I had several different style of, of beers um, and vodkas. So just that culmination of, of everything, traveling around. And uh, when I got back to the States, um, 
you know, early, probably late 1990 time frame, early 2000s. Um, you saw saw uh, things starting to take off, especially out in Colorado. Um, and I remember um, Tommy Knocker was one of the first um, craft beers I had tried while I was out there skiing one time. And I was like, man, this is this is really good. And then it just exploded after that. So, Krista, when did you have the moment once you got out of the military, or perhaps during your career, that you decided you wanted to actually get into the industry and open something up? Uh, the year I retired, 2011, my buddy that opened this distribution company had 500 different products under his belt, um, had trouble organizing it, been asking me for five years to retire early, which was not going to happen. Um, so as soon as I retired, I, I got in with him. Uh, we started distributing from Chattanooga to Knoxville to Nashville, so really exploded the company in, in about a year. Uh, and then Budweiser came along and decided to, to buy him out. Um, so I ditched that and a buddy of mine that retired from the army, we started talking about opening a, a beer bar. Um, so we had brought in things like Marble Brewing from Albuquerque, New Mexico. We brought in the Tommy Knocker. We brought in a, a bunch of different lines uh, and we're gonna get started with that. Unfortunately, uh, something happened with his son. He took off to go back to Seattle. Um, and I took a job with SOCOM and put everything on pause for about a year and a half. And when I came back, uh, the beer industry had blown up and that was what 2014 um, so I put everything on pause again went back overseas went to try a couple different fun breweries overseas and then uh, while I was over there uh, in Qatar I got a call that a place in Chattanooga was opening up and I took a chance and, and dropped a deposit and got on a plane and left so calm and here I am so was Chattanooga home for you originally, Chris? Grew up here, went to high school, you know, never thought I'd come back here. But uh, I think uh, J.D. had mentioned it, about finding a niche in a location that needed something. Um, and Chattanooga had five craft breweries at the time, and now they have 14. So in five years, we've gone from literally five. And I worked for Chattanooga Brewing Company for a little while um went from and they were one of two in 2012 one of two craft breweries and now this the city has either 13 or 14 now I, I love hearing stories about when breweries open up in areas that you don't necessarily think of as craft beer towns because there's so much education involved and that just kind of leads to building relationships when you can help someone have their first craft beer experience they're going to become loyal to you and they're going to become not just loyal to your beer, but you as a person and what you're building. And it sounds like you've created that. I've tried. It's a constant work in progress. Now, Kevin, you mentioned it's more fun to be a consumer. So when did you have the moment that you were like, you know what? I love drinking it, but let's make some of my own. How did that come to be? Uh, so uh, I'll give you the, the, the quick quick rundown. So when I left the army in 2004, I, I took a job with Booz Allen uh, up in Michigan for a moment, trying to get back to Colorado. Uh, my father came and asked me to come help him with his company. Um, so I couldn't say no to my father and, and went to help him. Um, that, that company ended up putting me in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, he passed away suddenly in 2011. And uh, so I thought it was time for me to chase my passion and do something that I would I would really love doing for myself. And uh, so my fiance uh, bought me a home brewing kit for Valentine's Day in 2012. And uh, we started playing the brewery seven months later. I love how organized that story was. It wasn't like you've told it before, right? <laughs> never, never. <laughs> and when did you open? What year was it, Kevin? 2014. Yeah, 2014. Our first beer in July of 2014. Yep. Awesome. Now, now, Catherine, I got to ask you a few questions right now because you mentioned you had a great army husband and he supported you through everything you did and you were an army dentist you know how did you feel about beer is there anything you know health wise i should know about how many beers i typically drink any you know personal recommendations of too much too little you know that's 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 a good point us as we as craft beer drinkers we're not swilling just to get a, a buzz and that's something that i really like about craft beer drinkers is that you know, we drink it for the enjoyment and for the flavor and, 
it, it's good and it's got good health qualities. I don't know how many people have gotten headaches from the commercial beers that are out there. And when they drink a craft beer, it's like, I didn't get a headache. Yeah, that's it. So when your husband said you, he wanted to open a brewery, what were your initial thoughts? Oh, let's go for it. Let's go for it. He had been home brewing um, since 1990, and then he started doing uh, professional brewing with so many different breweries across the country and in Germany and in England. And so it was a lot of fun. And at home, we were always the popular house because he had, you know, from anywhere from nine to 11 beers on tap. And so when people would come over, they'd say, oh, you need to start a brewery. And when the time was right, we did it and never looked back. So you, with your past career as a dentist, where did you see yourself initially fitting in the operation of a brewery? Would you have an active role or what was that you know, thought process like for your involvement? You know, our, our partners um, are great. We have a, a couple that are really entrepreneurs. He's a total businessman looking forward. Um, she's marketing and Lenny, my husband, is the brewmaster. So what's Catherine going to do? Well, you know, I'm, I'm very detailed in the weeds type of person. And so I'm also a, a rule follower. So I make sure that, you know, our HR is going well. And I look at licensure and things like that to make sure that we're on par, that we're doing the right thing. And do you enjoy your second career? I do. I do. It's a rush. Learning things I never dreamed I'd learn. <laughs> That's the fun of being an entrepreneur and opening a business. You learn something every single day. Yeah. JD, how about you? How did you get to where you are today? Uh, just It kind of started with, um, I, I had done some homebrewing before as I go through knee surgery, picked up a one gallon homebrew kit from Bed Bath & Beyond and just kind of it turned out well and recovered from knee surgery. And I was like, Hey, this is something that, you know, and just kind of enrolled into there. You picked up a homebrew yeah. kit from bed, bath and beyond. Yeah. Hey, from it's like a Brooklyn kit. brewing or something like that. So you can get everything there. <laughs> I got, yeah, like 12, 12 bottles of beer came out of it and it turned out good. So, um, just kind of a, you know, uh, rush purchase, you know, type of thing. Um, but it was, it was about two years out from retirement. I decided I didn't, I was with a unit that was primarily run with civilians. And I just kind of knew that I didn't want to do, uh, I didn't want to do any GS work after the military. Um, and so that's when we decided, uh, my partner and I, you know, we sat down and was like, what, you know, what about opening a brewery up? You know, we really enjoyed the scene in Hawaii because there was a pretty decent scene in Hawaii when we were there. Uh, of course, Washington state at JBLM, tons of breweries around there talking to the brewers there and so that's kind of that kind of steamrolled us into you know doing something different um never thought i'd be an entrepreneur never thought i'd be a business owner let alone a brewery owner but here we are and still kicking it so jd what did you think you were going to be when you left the military did you have anything i Back burner. It was, I, I was going to do, I was going to do government civilian work. I was going to do 20 years in the military, 20 years for government civilian work, retire at double retire at 58 years old and be done. I would argue you're doing the best thing of to. civilian work right now, actually. It, it is. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's funny that, um, I was supplying the military. So everybody loved me there and now I'm the beer guy. And so everybody loves me here. So absolutely you know, best, of best of both worlds, I guess you could say. So just in the news, you hear a lot of conversations about people leaving the military and having a tough time transitioning, whether it's, you know, finding what educational opportunities you want to pursue or having the vocational skills to go into a new career. You know, what was the challenge like for all of you making that transition from the military to your new careers? Uh, well, I think, a, you know, a big part of our challenge for folks getting out of the military is they don't really know what they want to do. Um, you know, they think they think they know. Uh, or someone's told them what they should go do, uh, but they really haven't found that next passion yet. And um, and so a lot of people go into the job that someone tells them they should go do, and then they're unhappy, and um, and then it becomes harder and harder to to find that that spot. So um, you know, we we do uh, a lot here with soldiers that are being uh, medically retired out of the military and provide internships, um, so they get a little bit of experience of 
you know, work in the environment and all different aspects to see if something, something hits home with them. And for you, Kevin, when you were making that transition, were there any resources that were really valuable to you to make it easier? Uh, the people. It was all about networking, classes, workshops, online, whatever wasn't wasn't the thing. It was, you know, recognizing that that you know a lot of people doing a lot of things and not being, um, you know, being humble enough to ask folks to to help you out and to uh, introduce you to others. It's that community that we all love. It's important, That's right? Now, does anybody else, you know, you have any advice or ex experiences that you had firsthand from making that transition from your, your service careers to running a brewery? So when I went, when I went through transition, you know, I knew what I wanted to do and going through all the transition courses we had to go through, um, through the, was a soldier for life, uh, program that the army has, uh, you know, everybody went around and raised their hand and I got to me like, I want to run a brewery. And people were like, I don't know how to help you with that. Um, surprising. And we were in Washington state, but it's surprising how many people don't get out and think that they may work in a brewery, but trying to run or run or open a brewery is a different story. Um, a lot of them, you know, they open retail businesses or food businesses that are fairly common, uh, you know, and have a, a good set of information and analytics behind it and the breweries, especially where we were going to move to, you know, we, we didn't get as much assistance as I thought we were going to, but going in and, you know, talking to being a veteran really helps, but going in and talking to, to brewery owners, brewers themselves, um, everywhere that we were here in Texas, up in Washington, Colorado, and we'd stop in Colorado, Las Vegas as well. Um, really, it's surprising how well people open up and are willing to have the conversation with you and give you, you know, the, the real nitty gritty on what this business entails and what it's going to take out of you. So that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And Catherine and Chris, I, I love to hear a little bit about, you know, how you made the transition successfully from your past career as to your current. My my transition was pretty bumpy. Uh, I you know I had a dual career of being a dentist and a soldier, and um, when I retired, I could do neither. I was disabled, and so I you know I flummoxed and floundered around a little bit. I did a lot of um, great volunteer work. I'm, um, I worked a lot with our Stevens County Honor Guard, so we would um, give final honors to um, military service members who passed on. So that was really meaningful. And when this came up, it was like, okay, I can do this. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And Chris, your turn. Uh, yeah, mine was bumpy is a good term for it. <laughs> um, coming back to Chattanooga, there's you know, there's no military base here, so it's quite interesting. And when you've spent 20 plus years doing something, uh, I was an infantry guy for my entire career. So it was either security guard or, or police officer or fire fighter or something like that. And it was, I wasn't opposed to jumping back into another uniform, but it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to take a different direction, um, opening a beer joint. I mean, a 30 tap beer joint was kind of more my focus, not necessarily the brewing side. Um, it wasn't until I opened in 2017, it, 2016, I got introduced to a, a, another guy um, that had a desire to open a homebrew store, had been home brewing on his own. I'd never brewed. Um, so I was like, well, I, I know how to run the business. I can help get you started uh, with the intent of you taking it over within a year. Uh, so the that was a very bumpy road. Um, it, it did not turn out the way I thought. He did not take it over. So the next year while I was in business, I, I learned how to brew. Um, and my girlfriend decided, you know, she's a doctor and she's like, uh, I like chemistry. I like to cook. And so she kind of took over the brewing side and now she brews. She's actually a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force as well. So she's we should have had her join us today. She's uh, working her other job, <laughs> um, and she does work her other job. And you know, we still call brewing our our hobby job, uh, but we keep eight taps on uh, out of thirty at the bar. And um, so that bumpy road I can relate to. Um, 
and it, it's uh, been interesting because I, I had to dive in. I mean, I, I literally brewed nothing until 2016. Um, so it, it was quite an experience to jump in, um, but I, I don't give up easily. Uh, and I sure as hell was not going to lose my business. So I just jumped in, figured it out, took a lot of classes. And what Kevin said is the camaraderie, you know, not only in the military, but in this industry is amazing. Yeah. Um, you have great camaraderie, great leadership, great mentors. Um, everybody becomes a friend. You know, you can sit around a campfire and have a beer and, and talk about uh, things and share stories and share experiences. And it's kind of what I miss about the military, but what I've gained in, in this industry. No, I love that similarity. And Chris, I do have a follow up question for you. Have you actually ever homebrewed? Uh, y yes. I have some fun homebrewing stories that led to uh, the stories here because I've blown a lot of things up, you know, and not with TNT or. I was going to say in the military and at home. I was not a famous. I was a grunt, right? I was a knuckle dragger. So I went through a lot of exploding before. Were I these after you home. opened it as a brewery or before? Uh, after. So like I said, the first year, Eric, the guy that I opened it for that with the intent of him taking over, he ran that store for the first year. Uh, I just did the behind the scenes business stuff while I ran my bar here. And then when he disappeared and I had to, to learn how to brew, I mean, when I took a dive course, I took a dive course. I, I went around to every other brewery in town and I was like, I need help. Somebody show me how to do this, show me the ropes. And then luckily my girlfriend is like, you don't know how to cook. We'll figure this out together. Um, she's like, you just run the business and, and I'll, I'll stir the, the grains. I was like, okay, I'll lift heavy things and, and you do the math. So uh, it's worked out. I mean, like I said, it, it was a bumpy, bumpy road, but camaraderie uh, and team building in this industry, especially in Chattanooga, no one here is scared to not help another brewery out, which is awesome. Um, you don't get that everywhere I know, but in this town, I have not, I know every brewer in, in town, I could go over there and be like, Hey man, I need this. They do not hesitate to help one another out. And that's again, in our background, our, our, you know, experiences, you turn to your teammate and you get what you need. It's the same thing here. No, that's wonderful. And I love the comparison you're making between the camaraderie and the community between the military and craft beer. And for everyone else, I, you know, I love to hear some of the similarities that you've experienced, you know, anything that you took away from the military that you found very similar to your new life in craft beer. I think one of the most important things uh, that you learn in the military is field craft. And um, <laughs> something you have to apply every day in a brewery is, um, fixing something with what you got. Give us an example, Kevin, because you knew that question was coming. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you're always, you're always find yourself in a situation where you need to like a jockey box, for example, you need to set up a jockey box for an event or, um, uh, and there, you know, there, there are things that you can buy and make it work perfectly. Or there's the box of things in the back of the brewery that you can pick through. <laughs> Uh, and put together to create a solution that works. It may not um, be something you want to put on a shelf and sell, but um, it completes the mission. That's a great example. And Chris, I saw you unmute very quickly there. So I think you might have a story to tell. Uh, no, I, I was just like, that's a great analogy to, to how things work. It's it's that MacGyvering your way through things and, and you know, taking some duct tape and <laughs> wrapping it around when you need to and and finding that box of goodies and going, okay, this is happening. How do I fix this? Or somebody calls you and says, Hey, I need this. And we're all in, I, I don't know, the mindset of we can get this done. We're going to accomplish the mission. How do we do it? I just like, well, it, it, it is a great analogy because you have to be able to adapt on the fly. Yep. Yeah. And what I've noticed is in, in the area is, um, nobody wants to see each other fail you know that's that's what it is like you know you reach out you need a you know you need some extra grain or you need some hops that you don't have or you're missing some some parts or pieces uh we were doing an event up in waco <clears throat> last year and we didn't have a jockey box yet and i reached out to one of the local breweries and said hey you know can we borrow your jockey box and they're like sure no problem they cleaned it up for us had everything ready to go picked it up did the event super successful and returned it and realized that i need my own jockey box so 
Um, yeah, that's uh, the, uh, the camaraderie thing that, you know, Chris said, it's, it's having that and it, it's definitely apparent in the craft beer industry. And I think it's the one of the industries that you're going to find that that's the case aside from uh, just the military itself. And JD, looking back on it, you've already talked about how much, you know, we can have an experience together over a pint of beer. Do you think subconsciously that was a reason you decided to go into the craft beer industry? Uh, I think so. Um, it's it's funny how, I'll, you know, last night we had, it was the Marine Corps birthday, so happy birthday, Chris. Um, you know, we had we had some guys come in and we sat down and, you know, we, we BSed over a pint. I bought them their first pint for the day. And uh, I meet probably new people at least every week that, you know, we either served in the same locations or, you know, had the same experience or, you know, we're at the same duty station, didn't really know it. Um, and it's amazing what you learn from from everybody uh, through this through this process. So, absolutely. No, no, Catherine. How about you? What are some of the similarities you found between your past career and your current? You know, it's a small world, and we're constantly finding people. You know, JD, you're talking about um, meeting people that, yeah, we might have been in the same place at the same time, or yeah, we I, I was stationed there too, and finding people that you, you might have known and um, or you've had similar experiences, that's what's a lot of fun. And just having fun with that, um, you know, in the military, besides some of the hard work, it was fun. We had a lot of great experiences, a lot of uh, good times. And I can say the same thing with running a brewery. There's some pretty hard experiences times that we go through but at the same time it's fun if you're not having fun then why are you doing it yep. so looking back on your career Catherine, as an army dentist is there anything you learned from the army that you found you can apply to the craft beer world sops <laughs> everybody has to have an sop and if you don't have that then you don't have the consistency that you really want um, one of the things that i like about the craft brewing system and maybe the military changed a little bit since I got out in 05, but um, our SOPs are living and we constantly go back and it's not a dusty notebook on the shelf. It's like, yeah, we need to have that consistency. We need to know how to do this and get it right. So what are some of the SOPs you've written that you're most proud of at the brewery? You know, in the tap room, that's one of the big things. We've got a lot of part-time employees that are absolutely phenomenal, but everybody wants to do a little bit different. And so having checklists and ways of going about things it really helps. It's like, oh, yeah, I forgot that. No, I love that because you're right. The tap room experience, you, when you hire someone to work at your brewery, so often a brewer or a brewery owner We'll assume that that person knows what to do, but every tap room is a unique experience and having those SOPs on hand, you know, helps educate that person on what you stand for and the procedures you want to have in place. <laughs> so with regard to, yeah, Kevin, go ahead on that one. Uh, I was going to say, um, <clears throat> you know, we've, we've made it a, 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 a very rigorous um, kind of basic training type scenario for folks coming into our tap room, regardless of their experience, they've got to go through, um, the training, the basic training that we put them through for our tap room and the way we do things at our place and the way it was done somewhere else doesn't matter. Um, just like in the military, when you change units, um, you show up to a new unit and your old unit used to do a certain way. The last thing the leader wants to hear is, well, at our other place, we used to do it this way. Um, and so we don't give, we don't give that opportunity for that conversation. Is that something you had from the get go when you started your brewery, that training? Yeah, absolutely. Um, everybody, you know, rowing in the same direction um, in the same way. No, I love it. Now, how about you, Chris? Did you do anything similar with regard to training? Yeah, uh, I, I kind of built it off of, again, being an infantry guy, I always talk to my staff and relay the fire team message to them. This is, we're building a team here. It's not just I'm here to do my shift and then I'm out. You're part of the team. Um, so, I, I try and build it so that we have four people on at any given time. That's the size of a fire team and they all work in unison. They all work together. 
There's no, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Um, everybody has a position. Everybody has, you know, their responsibility, just like you would in, in the military. But uh, in the end, it's for the common good. It's to get this done the best way possible. Um, you know, and I've gotten a lot of great feedback from you, Andrew, and doing a few of those things with you um, that helped us bring it up a notch. Uh, I do agree that it's an evolving kind of business. And if you don't evolve with it, you don't learn from it, you don't grow with it. Um, consistency is, is key when it comes to, to the brewing side so that your product tastes the same. But uh, especially in the last two years, the evolution of what's happened in, in the world, uh, if you don't grow with that and you don't recognize it and you don't understand how it affects the people around you or your team, uh, I think it's important. So yeah, I, and I like what Kevin said, I, I never let people come in here with, uh, with this is the way we used to do it. Well, that's good. You can go back there or you can, you can adjust to how we're going to do it. It's all about learning. And JD, how about you? How do you apply? Oh, Kevin, you got something you want to add there? Nope. No. JD, so how do you apply your, the training mentality from the military to what you've created today? Uh, well, you did, <clears throat> I've learned that you can't use the knife hand all the time to get things done, uh, especially on the civilian side. But we, so we had a unique, unique situation. So we opened in COVID last year, May 2019 or 2020. Um, so <clears throat> it was literally just the owners, myself, Stacy, and our other business partner that we were stuck running the tap room, running the brew house, running everything on ourselves for the first probably six months of the, of the business. Just, that's just the way things worked out. Um, but that got us the opportunity to kind of develop our own procedures. And then Stacy, who's she kind of runs the tap room piece of it, I guess you could say. She's the one that created those checklists and procedures. She's business analyst, you know, from prior experience. And so she has that same drive for SOPs and checklists. And this is how we're going to do things. Um, luckily, some of our employees are prior service. So they, they you know, took direction well, came in and, and followed, you know, followed suit with what we needed to get done and understood that this is how we do things. Uh, if you have a better way of doing something, by all means, bring it up, but learn our way to do it first. Um, and that's kind of how I did with uh, our cellarman assistant brewer that you know, I brought in for the brewing side of the house. I said, look, like I know how to do I know how to do the brewing side on my side. Once you figure it out and you can find better avenues to get something done, by all means, I'm open for it. But we need to do it my way for the time being, just because. I know if something gets messed up where it's going to get messed up at. And he's been tremendous in that. So it's, it's having that relationship and being able to have that open dialogue. Like, yes, it's our way or the highway type of thing, but also being open to some suggestions and changes if necessary. No, great advice there. And JD, I also have a wife named Stacy and I also love checklists. So I agree with a lot you just said, but you know, <laughs> looking at training and looking at checklists, is there anything, JD, you include on in your checklist that might strike me as a little unusual, but you find very valuable to have written down? Or anyone else, any steps you've kind of taken the time to put in on paper that might not be something we all think about could provide value to help your organization run smoother? That's a really good question. We, you know, we've um, uh, created a not, you know, not not just a, a a mission statement or a vision statement for the brewery, but also for our tap room as well. Is you know that's our our biggest sales and marketing area is our tap room, and so uh, that's where I spend a lot of my time creating that vision, so that the staff is um, trained on that vision. They understand my intent, so when I'm not there um, for the five minutes of the week that I might not be in the tap room, uh, they know what my intentions are and they can carry on that vision and so um we try and incorporate it into you know like the four e's of um when all else fails you should be um entertaining educating um uh enchanting and engaging with these folks so that's fantastic um, is that something you created or something you found along yeah that's fantastic that's a west point thing i'm sure <laughs> so uh yeah the uh we got we got a lot of those those four letter um or four word single letter uh rules and also we've done you know as much as i didn't like it in the military you know we've got a lot of, of former folks former military folks working for us or with us and um so you know we've incorporated a lot of the things the military did does with you know pmcs and first level maintenance and second level maintenance of of equipment and and uh and things that are used in the tap room and the brewery. 
important stuff there. Does anybody else have any more unique things you've added to your checklist that may stand out from typical brewery owners? Well, if not, I've got a fun follow up for you. And this JD is something you mentioned. You know, you mentioned you have a few other veterans working in the tap room. Do you all focus your hiring efforts to finding other prior service or current service members to help out in the tap room or you know in the brew house? Have you found that you know is a trend in your hiring practices? Uh, or and so have you reached out to more veterans just to you know educate them on craft beer to show that this is an opportunity they could pursue when they get out of the service? I can tell you in Chattanooga, that's hard. I, I thought that was the direction I wanted to go. Um, I did attempt to do that, but uh, not being in a, a round of military town, it's hard to kind of reel that in. Um, I, I think uh, more importantly, you know, if I can relay my experiences to the team and kind of help build them, it doesn't matter to me if they were in the service or not. Um, but I know in my area that would be very hard to do. Um, so it's not something I necessarily look for anymore. Yeah, for, for us, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge only because of the, the amount of opportunity that we can provide um, and the timing of when that opportunity becomes available and if that person is ready or not to, to, to seize on that opportunity. Uh, being, being in Savannah and being located close to uh, Hunter Army Airfield, Fort Stewart, and, and SOCOM, for that matter. Uh, we do get a, a lot of those interns uh, that are folks that are um, medically retired now of the military and have an opportunity to, to work with us for several months um, and get them experience. Even if it's not with us, they may end up somewhere um, in, in Texas or Tennessee or Oklahoma uh, with a little bit of that experience and recognize that they, they could be a help helpful addition to somebody else's team. Yeah, we, we are about 40 miles from um, Fort Sill and we have a lot of soldiers coming over, which is great. We love it. Um, we have hail and farewells here and we've created a lot of beer disciples that come over. We, we, we have gotten um, a number of soldiers that have worked with us um, are working with us, some that have gone into the reserve se sector, some that are separating. So it's, it's good to, but I think that that's an opportunity that we could look for is to actually um, cater to some of the soldiers that are separating, retiring and coming out. I mean, who wouldn't want to work at a brewery as part of their transition back into civilian life, right? No, let's talk about what your brewery stands for. You know, how important is your prior service in the messaging you put out to your community? Is it something you have in all your marketing materials and your tap rooms? I love to hear about how you incorporate your service into the experience. Uh, well, I'll lead off since um, ours is service brewing. Um, so it's, <laughs> um, it does take some folks a little while to recognize like, oh, now I get why you're Carl at Service Brewing. Um, you know, you're, you're veteran owned and, and veteran brewed, but um, you know, it is a big part of who we are. Um, 20 out of 24 investors are, are veterans of the Army, Navy and Marines. Whoa, you said 20 out of 24. I'm not yeah. gonna ask how many are involved in daily operation. That sounds like <laughs> a whole team in itself. Yeah, they're uh, mostly pretty, pretty uh, pretty quiet but um <laughs> uh we we donate a portion of every pint we sell to charity right now we're supporting folds of honor out of oklahoma um and uh you know with arrived they've actually just introduced a donation button on their pos system so folks can give an opportunity to donate uh at, as they close each tab and that's worked out really well so um if you walk into our tap room um, i lived in a 20-foot container for seven months when i was in iraq and we have two 40-foot containers stacked um, as our draft wall. Uh, we've got parachutes hung on our south wall. We've got a giant American flag framed on those containers. Um, and uh, so it's 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 not an in-your-face um, place where people won't feel welcome if they didn't serve in the military, but it's a, uh, a, a measured honorarium and, and recognition of folks' service to the country and community. No, that's fantastic. And you mentioned the new Arrive feature 
uh, Roundup, which I think is pretty incredible because it allows customers to round up their tab to donate it to a nonprofit of their choice. And Kevin, does it go to your brewery or are you a nonprofit or who do you have those funds go to? So we rotate uh, charities every quarter. Um, so we've been supporting Folds of Honor um, since I think beginning of august and then uh this weekend we have um our annual vintage and custom motorcycle show and uh we will be changing from folds of honor to operation combat bike saver uh and they provide services to veterans to teach them how to weld and build motorcycles and they can build their own motorcycles so um they they helped one of my soldiers from iraq uh who lost his leg in in uh in combat and so uh, they'll be showing up here tomorrow, and so they'll be the beneficiary of our our pint donations and our POS donations for the next quarter. Yeah, that that is very very cool. Now, for everyone else here, I love to hear about you how you incorporate your service, you know, into your current experience that you put out. I mean, obviously, you can't be called service brewing because Kevin's got that one covered. But you know, how have you yeah. taken your past career and put it into your current? So with us, it's uh, so Firebase. Um, I, I wanted a flaming hop cone. That's kind of my only the, the whole thing. Uh, we decided to go the veteran theme pretty fairly quickly, and so we just added sandbags to the bottom of it. And it kind of went through, and of course, we promote that it's veteran owned and veteran brewed. Um, we are in Temple, which has a huge veteran population, being right outside of Fort Hood. You got uh, a huge VA campus here that does a lot, the, the, one of the better VA campuses in America, honestly, which is kind of what drove it, drove us here. Um, and so we, we we flaunt it, but we it's not like totally in your face. You walk in, we're in a downtown space about 3,300 3, square feet. Um, you walk in, I call my left wall the nice wall because it's got, it's nice and clean. It's got all five service symbols up there. Uh, we do have uh, local police and firefighters association as well towards the back. And we're, you know, we'll add to that as, as the years progress. And then the right hand side looks where our bar and our cooler and everything are literally looks like two soldiers put it together because two soldiers put it together. Um, <laughs> we did about 85% of the work in there and we had the local chamber president come in about a couple days before we opened. And he's like looking around and he's like, is this, is this it? Are you guys ready to open? We're like, yeah, all we have to do is just lay the bar top. And he didn't get it. And I had to explain it to him because the way the wall, when we took everything down, the one brick wall or, or masonry wall there literally looks like one of the buildings we would have been in in Iraq or Afghanistan. Uh, looks like it's got bullet holes in it. It's got the, the weird paint and bricks chipping and all kinds of stuff going on. And it just kind of gave us chills once we realized it and we just kind of rolled with it from there. We built a big old hooch, which is our, the beer cooler. It's got camo netting hanging down from it. We got really lucky and got a duck sock. So it looks like it's a, uh, one of the command post tents when we're down range for our air conditioning system, uh, picnic benches inside. And just, if you're in the military, you come in, you feel welcome. And if you're not in the military, if you haven't been in the military, you, you come in and feel welcome. And that's really what we wanted. It's a safe space for everybody to come to, regardless of whether you served or not. No, that's great, JD. And for those guests who haven't served in the military, you know, how do you educate them on what you just told us about that experience you've tried to create that just reminds you of your service? Uh, we just let them know how, how important it is to us. Like, you know, it, it's one of those, you know, when it kind of, and talking to guys that talking to well, anybody, not guys and women that come in and they see it and they're like, that reminds me of Iraq and that's why we kept it. And so those, you know, the civilians that don't understand it, I had to explain it to him. My first, you know, the first building I stayed in in Iraq in, in 03 was a pill factory just outside of uh, Balad. And that's exactly what, that's exactly what the walls look like. It's just run down, but I was there. it, it oddly, it oddly gave you, gave me a sense of calming effect and having a beer in the hand just makes it even better. You get a little PTSD kind of kicking back up again, some, some, uh, you know, chicken skin going on, but uh, it it just kind of brings back some odd, weird, fun memories. No, Chris, I'm just looking at your backdrop right now. And for everyone who's, you know, listening after the fact and not watching live, can you explain what you have behind you? Uh, yep. Well, JD said it about the service flags. So and this is our brewery side. 
Uh, on the brewery, we have the flags flying. Uh, we do have a Space Force sticker up there somewhere. You can't really see it because, you know, it's out in space. Um, <laughs> and, and in the tap room, we have the same thing. We've got uh, some banisters, and, and I've got a little Space Force sticker right, you know, tucked in between the Air Force uh, back there. But uh, we are kind of low-key. Again, we're not a huge military town. We do have a sign that says we offer um, military discounts for um, first responders, et cetera. So obviously we're service oriented and veteran known that is on the building that's on the, the door. So people understand that. Um, and you know, last yesterday was a Marine Corps birthday. So I just did a post about that and had some guys show up and, you know, a couple had never been here before. We had a cake cutting ceremony right inside the tap room. Other people that were in the bar were like, this is interesting. This is different. We explained a little bit of the history just out loud. Um, and then passed out cake when we were done. And today we've got uh, the battles group coming out um, for Veterans Day uh, tonight. Um, and there's a uh, local um, service dog uh, training center right down the road that I just connected with about two months ago. Um, so I'm helping them do some stuff and I'm looking forward to doing a, a bigger event with them. Um, so people in the community do know that both Amanda and I are, are veterans and um, the staff talks about it all the time all the time uh one of my my lead guys has been with me almost five years his dad is a vietnam uh, veteran marine so he and i always you know collab when he's here having a beer it's it's kind of fun but uh, like jd said it's good memories um things to just bring up when people are in house and we talk about it so awesome thanks for sharing that chris and Catherine, I love to hear. I mean, I don't know how you can incorporate your army dentistry in the tap room. Perhaps you have a chair in the corner people can take appointments at. But. No. <laughs> no, we are very subtle. And if if you walked into our brewery, our tap room, um, the out the area outside, you may not understand that it is veteran owned. Um, when you talk to people, that's when you find out. Oh yeah, yeah, we do have that common um, experience. It's we're very laid back as far as having that um, military type of vibe. We don't really have that. Um, so when people come in, we can share it verbally. Um, but I think that you guys have given me a lot of inspiration to amp up our, our presence as veterans. No, lots of good inspiration today. And Kevin, I really love what you've done with the roundup feature. Chris, I love how you give the discounts to veterans, but I'd love to hear other ways you have given back to, to the community and how you further, you know, simply, you know, engage with veterans in your area. I'd love to hear any unique strategies that you all have thought about doing or have done already. Well, I mean, yeah, but for us, there, there's, there's all kinds of opportunities. I mean, there's, um, you know, the, the American Legion, I was at Kiwanis breakfast this morning, um, the, the downtown Rotary Club, you know, all, all of those things in your community where there's there's folks that want to support the, the military and there's those who have been in the military. Um, a, a big a big thing for us in, in Savannah that was, you know, just an opportunity that we needed to and wanted to jump on was uh, a tiny house project. And um, the local housing authority was trying to build a village of tiny homes for veterans uh, to get them out, out of their homeless um, situation and, and provide them 119 square feet to get, get back on their feet. And um, they didn't really have any momentum. So we took it on as a brewery and provided our platform as an opportunity to share that concept and raise money for them. Um, and you know, very quickly, we we're able to get $30,000 together for them to pay the mortgage on the land. Um, and now we have you know, Team RWB in the community who comes in and they um, volunteer their time and services to help put those homes together. That's an amazing project, Kevin, to be involved in. Awesome. We, no, we end up giving 10% um, to off on for all the veterans. And one of the things that we do, we have a happy hour um, where you have discounted prices. And one of the things that we're doing is the happy hours are in place for everybody, but the veterans get 10% off of that. So it's not like this or that. 
the veterans always 10% of whatever the going price is. Well, as we yeah. wind down this hour, JD, all you. Oh, sorry. As we, I mean, we, we, we do the veteran first responder discounts, nurses, there's a huge hospital in the area. Um, you know, given the fact that we've only been open for 18 months now, we're still trying to get into the process of, you know, finding a quarterly, you know, donation place that we're going to do really excited. Stacy's going to really look at this roundup thing from arrive. So we're, I, I'm actually pretty excited about it because one of those things is I want to get, I want to use our platform to be able to give back. We did a, special beer release for the local firefighters association in july uh, donated to their organization we're working with <clears throat> old armor beer company out of north carolina they're doing it's called uh, angels of kabul for the 13 that got killed uh recently so we're, we did that beer we released it uh this past friday 50 percent of those proceeds are going to go to the to the taps.org organization it's a trauma and survivor assistance i think I, really bad with acronyms since leaving the military, but um, <laughs> so we're doing that, but it's one of those things that definitely getting looking for a regular thing to do. Uh, her niece has cystic fibrosis. We're looking to do something next year for that, for that benefit. Um, but just excited to be able to, you know, give back to the community. And we have the supporters kept us going this past 18 months and kept us alive. And so now we're looking for every opportunity that we can do to give back we're hosting a blue Santa toy drive in December. Uh, so that we did it last year as well. It was a pretty big event. We're looking to make it bigger. Uh, I'm a vice president for a ruck March or ruck Mark organization, ruck March organization here in the area, uh, working with the chamber of commerce and their military relations committee, anything to keep myself out of trouble and keep myself busy is pretty much what I'm looking forward to these days. So, I love a lot of the themes that have come across in the conversation today. First off, you four have been so inspiring. So thank you for your service and thank you for the time today. I've enjoyed the conversation, but just touching on things like camaraderie, hard work. I mean, I even like the mention of a checklist at some point today. So this conversation has just been fantastic and how you all give back to your communities. I'll say it again, it truly is an inspiration. But now I have to ask one final question and feel free to add anything else you'd like to throw out there. You know, people in the service I know wake up really early, you work really hard. Do you find yourself still waking up at the crack of dawn every day to get your day going? <laughs> no way. <laughs> I had enough of that. <laughs> Trying to get back to it. Um, you know, one, one thing of opening your own business and doing all of the things for all in all the areas of the business is uh, it's tough to maintain the schedule and the discipline that we used to have in the military. and. Uh, so I'm, I'm just finding myself seven years later at the point of where I feel like I can get back into more of a rhythm uh, so I can wake up early and do the things that I need to do to take care of my my personal um, and physical self than, uh, than just the brewery. It's a never ending job to find that balance between work and your own mental well-being. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't look like Chris is slacked off at all. Yeah, Chris, I think you work 24-7. You're, you're the hardest working person I know these days. Uh, I, I try and get some sleep when I can. But, um, yeah, Amanda and I say that all the time, though. You know, she works a full-time job. To me, this is definitely a full-time job. Um, 23 and a half hours a day worrying about making sure things are going well. Uh, but we, we actually committed – um to making a change coming in january we're starting that commitment uh in december we're actually going to go climb pikes peak in colorado cool. and kick it off a month early but we said this year for sure we're going to try and reel back in because we you know you have to be a workhorse here and that's just the nature of the beast um and it is the background but if you don't make time for yourself that's a bad thing and i tell my my staff this a lot i i, I tell them slow is fast you know, you know, don't go, don't get in a rush. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't screw it up. Take the time. Take 30 extra seconds. If you need to take time for yourself, take time for yourself because we're still going to be here. And it helps build a better team. And, and now I'm having to do that for myself. So you know, I think it's important. That's really great advice right there. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to add before we sign off? For, for me, it's been I, I still wake up. I don't wake up as early as I did in the military. 
I can when I need to, you know, when it's brew day and I got to get going early. Um, but it, it's like, like Kevin said, it's, you know, we don't have a schedule for anything because you either, you know, you can be at the tap room at 11 o'clock at night and have to be up the next morning at six o'clock. Um, it's just trying to, like Chris was saying, you know, I'm trying to get to the point of, I'm trying to look, trying to take care of myself when, where I can and when I can. Uh, Cause you kind of lose, you lose that once you're running the beast of this business. So um, luckily we're at a point where we have the staff to kind of cover down on some stuff and we can kind of take some things for ourselves. So, um, but that military work ethic, it never leaves. No, you all are inspiration. You're definitely working hard and I look forward to visiting your individual businesses, hopefully at some point before too long. So I appreciate you all. Thank you for all you do. And this has been a blast. Go enjoy the rest of your Veterans Day. You're going to do great things. Appreciate Thanks, it. Andrew. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.